Hi guys, I held this video off for so long but I'm ready. I know there's gonna be a lot of tension and some of you might think this list is so wrong but I'm a Libra and my mind can change with a good argument so let me know down in the comments if I got this rank totally wrong and why and I might change my mind later. But for now, this is the unofficial official ranking of all the men on Gilmore Girls. For this list, I'm only ranking actual boyfriends and husbands, so you won't be seeing Tristan DeGray or Marty on this list, but you can find them in my ranking of Rory's love interests video. And I'm also not including Jamie and Maury because their screen time is so few compared to the others, it wouldn't be fair. In true Rory Gilmore fashion, I'm going to do a pros and cons list on each man to try and convince you all that my list is right. Disclaimer, this is a ranking of the men based off the women they're with and some points may outweigh others. For example, being married for 40 years holds more weight than let's say three normal points like being funny and nice. Also, there are a lot of spoilers here in case you haven't finished Gilmore Girls, so I'd recommend you binge and then come back here. Anyways, now sit back, relax, get some snacks or get ready to do your hair and makeup or whatever you do when you watch YouTube videos because this one's a long video. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, in dead last, we got Christopher Hayden. When I was younger and I was, you know, with my childish brain, fourth grade, I'm watching Gilmore Gross for the first time. I thought he was perfect because he was handsome. He was funny, but I'm older and boy, is that wrong? Okay, so first off, pros. He's Rory's father, okay? He's charming and handsome and can keep up with the banter. Fred Mertz. I love Lucy, Fred Mertz. Landlord of Ricky, husband Ethel, I know. It's just a weird reference. He knows Lorelai like the back of his hand. And in a lot of ways, he's like the male Lorelai. On paper, he's perfect. But as I said, I got older, my brain's mature, and I know that there's a lot of red flags when it comes to Christopher Hayden. Cons. It's what we don't see that's the problem, and that is him being a present father in Rory's life. I don't even know what a family is. It's people living together. No, it's it's a big commitment. It's responsibility. It's hard work. It's coming home at the same time to the same place every day. In that respect, he is nothing like Lorelai because, as we know, Lorelai does everything for Rory. Secondly, he picked Sherry over Lorelai after promising her and Rory that he was going to stick around. Yes, sticky situation to be in with Sherry finding out she's pregnant, but couldn't he have just been honest with Sherry about his love for Lorelai, be a man and own up to his decisions for once? Instead, he leaves Lorelai devastated and Rory disappointed. You promised me, you promised me at Suki's wedding that this was going to work, that you were going to be there. You promised me. Three, he does not respect boundaries. It doesn't end there. Rory specifically goes to Christopher's apartment to tell him in words plain as day to stay away from Lorelai. I don't want you calling mom anymore. What? I want you to stay away from her. Rory, it Mom's in a relationship now and she's doing really great. Not mess or meddle in between her and Luke's relationship because for once in her life, Lorelai is happy. She honestly could not have spelled it more clearer. This occurs in season 5 episode 9. And in episode 13, a mere four episodes later, Christopher goes to Emily and Richard's wedding with the purpose to meddle and interfere in Lorelai's relationship. Like, come on, man. I thought Rory was overreacting when she first told him to stay away, but now it makes total sense because this guy is dumb. His intentions were not honorable or romantic. It was stupid and selfish. And again, it leaves Lorelai devastated. Now, time passes and he manages to get his millionth chance with Lorelai. And after everything with Luke, it seems like... Yeah, this could be the stability that Lorelai needs. This guy is serious and is keen on getting married. But he messes up again and again. 4. He rushed the marriage with Lorelai. When it was pretty evident she was hesitant at first, this guy should think about Lorelai and her needs as a priority for once. 5. He doesn't really understand the relationship between Rory and Lorelai, which was evident when they came back from France and he had no idea that Rory would be so upset that they got married without her. I think anyone who knows Lorelai and Rory would know that they are each other's priority and if you're going to be with either of them, you're going to have to respect that. And for him to not understand that, that's just stupid. 6. He is toxic and insanely jealous of Luke. This man has no foresight whatsoever and didn't realize that rushing things with Lorelai might be a mistake when her relationship with Luke ended not that long before they got together. So, let's tally the points in favor for Chris. 3. And points against Chris. 6. Next in 11th place, we got Dean Forrester. 
I know that he is some people's cup of tea out there. I know this because why else is he part of the debate over which guy was best for Rory? But I'm here to shed some light on why Dean is just not it. At least for Rory. I mean, I like to think that he's a super loving husband to Jenny or whatever her name is. So first, let's get into the pros because he wasn't all that bad. One, he had a Lori-like fascination and love for Rory. Uh, well, I've been watching you. He loved who she was as a person, her life, her relationship with her mom, so much so that he was like Max's master Ugwe in the Gilmore Girls department. You have much knowledge. You got that from Rory. Which could be seen as creepy, but I'm going to take it as a pro and keep it sweet. Two, he would do anything for Rory. Like be her escort at her cotillion, be her date for her formal, have dinner with her grandparents. He rescues her when she got stranded after a terrible date. He would have done anything for her. Probably even hide a dead body for her or something. I mean, the spell she had on him was enough for him to cheat on his wife. Which leads us to the cons. He cheated on his wife and manipulates Rory into believing that Lindsay knew the marriage was over in order to get Rory on board with sleeping with him. Two, he is anger management issues. Saying I love you is a really difficult thing. Well, I just did it. And you did it really well. What the hell does that mean? And you what? What? Say something. Stop yelling. You what? Go on, you have like three more what's ahead of you. He got mad at her when she didn't say I love you back. He has a tendency to rage and shout and throw a fit whenever he got mad at her. No, Rory. I don't want to go parading our relationship all over town. I didn't say- I don't need to rub Lindsay's nose in it any more than I already have, okay? And he yells at Rory over their infidelities like it wasn't his fault. Three. He was clingy and needy. I'll try paging. 5.30. Did you get my page? Call with the answer. You're not all from him. So I'm sorry, Dean lovers, but his pros are not as many as his cons. And by the way, his cons are major cons. All right, now in 10th place, we got Jason Digger Styles. So not much to say about him. I'm just going to go straight into his pros. One, he has a similar upbringing to Lorelai. He can keep up with the banter. Two, overall seems like a decent, hardworking man. Cons, wanted to compete with his dad's firm, which I think is a bit of a red flag. Two, makes Lorelai sleep in a separate bedroom, doesn't quite get her spontaneity, is quite rigid and stubborn with what he likes. And three, wants to sue her dad. I mean, he did get screwed over by him, but also you can't expect the relationship to last once you decide to do something like that. Overall, I mean, the relationship wasn't that bad, but it just wasn't like love or passionate in my eyes. He wasn't all that terrible. Number nine, Max Medina, the man that could have been. Pros, kind of like Dean, I get the sense that Max just loves what he sees in Lorelai, like a shiny object. Okay, this sounds more like a con in the way I phrased it, but I mean it like a pro. It's nice to have someone really like you. Number two, all around good guy and was very sweet and good to Rory. I just want you to know, I really wanted to be your stepfather. Cons, he just was not the right guy for Lorelai. Sometimes it's just as easy as explaining it like that. You know, sometimes a man could be absolutely perfect for you in every single way. He loves you. He adores you. You know, he's a good man. He's kind. He's good to your kid. He has a stable job. He's interesting. He's funny. Sometimes they could have the full package, but that does not necessarily mean that they're the man for you. If there's no spark, if there's no love, if there's no passion then it's just not it, you know? And I guess it's sometimes hard to explain that, but I think the girls that get it, they get it. And I know a lot of people are going to say it's so unfair for Max that Lorelai just left him like that. But I think it would have been more selfish for Lorelai to stay with him knowing how she feels than to let him go. Because now Max is free to find someone who loves him as much as he loves her. So she actually did the unselfish thing by letting him go. Because everyone deserves to be loved, right? That would have been so sad for him to be in a loveless marriage or a one-sided marriage. Anyways, I digress. Let's get a move on, shall we? Oh yeah, the point system. So that's two pros for Max. One very sad con for him. Okay, number eight. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for ranking him so low. But let me explain. The numbers don't lie. And this point system is very factual, okay? Number eight, we got Logan Huntsberger. Listen, 
Okay, let's start with the pros. You know, no one is inherently all that bad. So he's got some pros. And I did really like him at one point. But as the seasons go on, like I just couldn't handle. Anyways, let me stop babbling. I'll get into it. Number one, he loves Rory and is committed to her. He was a bad boy before. He could not commit to women before. But for some reason, Rory has this love spell that is just all over her that makes her so irresistible to men that she got this playboy to be fully committed to her. And I got to say props to him to do that. All right, fine, I'll do it. Do what? I'll be your boyfriend. Why not? And I think that was every little girl's dream when they were younger to get the bad boy to become good for them. But anyways, I digress. He's got that going for him. Number two, he's ambitious. I feel like she needs someone who is as, you know, ambitious as her and wants to keep up. And and he's got that going on for him. So it works out for the both of them. And number three, he can keep up with the banter. Again, I, I feel like this is such a pro, especially with these women, because they obviously need a guy who's witty, smart, can keep up with the banter. It would be so boring for them to be with someone who they had to explain jokes to all the time. And number four, he challenges Rory to be more adventurous. Come on, you look like you need a little adventure. What does that mean? Come on, guys. We all know that episode with the Life and Death Brigade. That was amazing. Iconic lines. Swoonworthy. Swoonworthy. So he's got four points for him. But cons. 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 One, he gaslights her when Rory's upset over finding out that Logan had many hookups while he thought they were just on a break. I didn't cheat on you. Oh, so you didn't sleep with? No, I did, but we were broken up. No, you were broken up, not me. I thought we were just taking some time. Apart, not seeing each other. Yes, taking some time, not seeing each other for a while. That doesn't mean broken up. Oh, come on. No. So it's a technicality over here, right? He thought they were broken up. He thought he wasn't cheating. Fine, like we can understand that. But I didn't see him comforting her or saying sorry that what he did made her feel bad. Instead, he's just me, 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 me. I thought this, I thought that. It's not my fault. So I wasn't a big fan of that. Two, he doesn't seem interested in being part of her life. Okay, and that's a big one. He skips Lane's baby shower. I just can't deal with a baby shower. No, I know. I, I get it. I'm going to go to Vegas with Colin and Finn. What? Yeah, I just need to blow off some steam for a couple days. He he skips out quite a few, if I'm not mistaken, quite a few uh, Stars Hollow events because he just doesn't feel like it. And I just think that's a really bad move on him. You know, and she had Dean who would do everything for her. She had Jess who also, like after a little bit of convincing, also did everything for her. And now she's just going to settle with this guy who's like, oh, I, don't, I don't feel well. You guys, you know, you go ahead. That's not cool. Three, he ego trips so hard. It is so disgusting. The way he, the way he is with Marty, disgusting. The way he handled the whole Jess thing, disgusting. Ew. Four. He was not the support or push that Rory needed when she so desperately needed one when she went off track with her school and her mom. Living with my grandparents. That's temporary. Have a drink. I'm in the DAR? Again, temporary. Have a drink. And wasting my time partying and drinking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't pull me into this. Don't make me feel guilty for your drinking and partying. That's your choice. I'm not forcing you. When I ask you out, you can say no. Yeah. I mean, I think someone who loves and knows Rory so much would know how much school and her mom means to her. I mean, I guess he did give her the space, but I didn't see any comforting words or pushing towards that direction. So it just seemed like he was okay with it all. Indifferent, rather. Five, he is a big reason why Rory became her worst self. We all know like the hot topic around here, around the Gilmore Girls community is Rory, her whole character kind of has a huge decline in the later seasons. And who's the constant denominator during these seasons from season five to seven? It's Logan. So the math speaks. Number six, he has an affair with Rory in the year in the life. Again, you. So sorry, Logan fans, but look at the numbers. We got four pros and six cons. Sorry. In number seven, this is actually the guy I think 
what's the best for Rory. But as I kind of explained in my previous video, Rory's men were kind of slim pickings. She did not have, um, or she didn't, we did not witness one very healthy, good relationship for Rory. So that's why he's kind of like here stuck in the middle in this whole list. Because as I go on, there were a lot better men on this show than the men that Rory dated. But anyways, this guy is my number one for Rory. And he is none other than Jess Mariano. Pros. Loves Rory. I think he like loves her. He knows her. Like I think he like loves her. Like he knows her soul. That kind of love. Two. Also can keep up with the banter. And they have a lot of similar interests. Three, encourages and supports her to be her best self. He did what Logan could not. I know you. I know you better than anyone. This isn't you. I don't know. What are you doing? Living at your grandparents' place? Being in the DAR? No, Yale. Why did you drop out of Yale? He tells her he thinks she can be a journalist. He's the one that knocks sense back into her and tells her to go back to Yale and make things right with her mom. And in the year in the life, he is the one who suggests she writes a book. He has a lot of positive influence in Rory's life. Four, he wants to make her happy. Take her to her prom, go to her grandma's. And it's just sad that it all ended tragically. But we could see his intentions, right? And his intentions were good and they were honorable. Five, he honestly wants the best for Rory. I think he is probably the most selfless out of all the boys she dated. He thinks of her first and him second. Cons. Right person, wrong time. Um, he came at a time when he was probably his most angry. His mom basically made him leave. He was forced to live in a town he did not want to move to. He had a lot of issues. But the thing is that all these issues were with himself. They weren't with Rory. But anyways, okay. I'm not going to defend him. Yeah. It was just right for a long time. Two. Uh, as I was saying, he has a lot of issues. Not going to class, angry at his life and situation and his mom. The thing in Kyle's bedroom. Being closed off and not communicating his problems to Rory. Not good. If he was mad at you because you wouldn't have sex with him, then he's a jerk. I know that, but I don't even know if that's why he's mad at me. I don't know if he's mad at me. I don't know anything because he won't talk. He just sulks, then disappears. And just when you're through with him, he shows up at hockey games with distiller tickets. Three, leaving Rory. That's devastating. Leaving Rory without saying a word. Jess. But you know what? Seeing him in the year in the life and just like in the later parts of the seasons, you could, you could tell his remorse, his regret. And he's grown a lot since then. But I guess the damage was done. Damage was done. So that's, again, right person, wrong time. Okay. Anyways, let's tally it up. He's got five pros and three cons. Number six is Paris's lover, Doyle McMaster. So pros, he loves Paris for exactly who she is. We love that for her. Two. He keeps up with Paris's wits and eccentric tendencies. Number three, he is freaking supportive and encouraging of Paris and in all of her endeavors. We love a supportive king. Cons, tried to kiss Rory. Two, they get divorced in the year in the life and he becomes a Hollywood hotshot. But who knows? Something tells me the story doesn't end quite there. But that's about it. So that's three pros for Doyle and two cons. Number five, we got Zach Van Gerbig. Sorry if I mispronounced that. So pros, we got he loves Lane. And I think that's pretty, you know, it's pretty evident since the time they started dating, their proposal, their marriage, their wedding, having babies. He loves her. No doubts about that. Number two, he willingly adapts to her life and culture. We all saw it in the uh, New Year and um, the wedding, the Korean wedding. He's really open to it, and we love that. Number three, similar interests. Duh. Cons. He ruined their chance with a record label because he was jealous of Brian. Ah, oh, still gets so upset over that. Anyways, that's three pros, one con. In fourth place, we have Richard Gilmore. Pros. One. Been married to Emily for 40 years and loves her. We love that. Two, a good man who provides for his family. 
in his mind, in his, uh, in what he's been taught, he did everything right. And he did everything for his family. And we like that. We, we love that. Three, he still keeps the romance alive. Cons. Lie to Emily for over 35 years by meeting with his ex fiance for lunch once a year since they've been married. Yeah. Two, does not help or support Emily with the tense interactions between her and his mom. He is obviously not a dumb man, so for him to not once stick up for his wife all these years seems incredibly cruel to me. Three, makes Emily feel like her purpose and responsibilities in life are frivolous and inconsequential. What's wrong with joining the DAR? We both agreed she needed a job. Fundraisers and tea parties? It's frivolous and meaningless. She has more to do, more to be. I don't want that life for her. You mean my life. <sighs> that, that one is, that one's pretty harsh. So that's why Richard is not in the top three. So I got to give pros three, cons three. In third place, we have Luke Danes. Pros. Loves Lorelai for exactly who she is. No debate about that. Two. Understands Lorelai and Rory's relationship. We love that. Three. Loves Rory like his own daughter. Four. Wants Lorelai to be happy. He buys, unbuys, and buys Trickham House, renovates her house, and is the reason why Rory's going away party even happens. He's always constantly there for Lorelai to do anything that she needs. Five. He kept the horoscope in his wallet for eight years. I just want you to know I'm in. I am all in. Cons. Lied to Lorelai about April for two months until she found out. And she only found out by chance. So who knows how long he would have kept up that lie for. Two. Kept April away from Lorelai and didn't allow her into that part of his life. Let me be part of it. No. Why? Because it's too soon. Rude. Three was so annoying on that Valentine's trip. Four, was not sensitive to Lorelai at all during their engagement after April came into their life. Telling up, it's all happening so fast. Well, if it's all happening too fast, you know, we could just postpone. And that would be okay with you? Sure. Yeah, that, that'll really help. Pros five, cons four. Number two, Jackson Belleville. Bros. One, loving husband to Suki, loving father to the kids. Two, shared love of food and produce. Three, they're ju they just get each other. Suki and Jackson are simpatico. They are food and produce and chef. How much more perfect could it get? Cons. Didn't tell her about getting a vasectomy, and then which later resulted in a accidental pregnancy. Two. Got mad at her that one time when she didn't understand his hint about him wanting to move in with Suki. Like, bro, why couldn't you ask her straight up instead of implying what you wanted and then getting mad? Anyways, that was just like one small fight. So we got three pros, two cons. Number one, Dave Rogalski. Oh my God, we were robbed. I'm so angry that he could not stay on this show. This was the love story we all deserve to have watched. This was a love story Lane deserved. No offense to Zach. He was just perfect. His like pros is just one. One pro. One very strong pro. Everything about him is perfect. The things he did to be with Lane. He read the Bible. He would make roots and elaborate plans and the sneaking and the hiding to be with her. He was just so sweet and in love. And like that's the kind of love everyone deserves, I feel. Excuse me. Dave, Dave, wait! Excuse me, Mrs. Kim, I need to speak with you. I'm busy, David. A few weeks ago, you told me that Lane had a crush on me. Well, I have a crush on her, too. And his only con is he left for college. Stupid OC. <sighs> so there it is, guys. Who do you think was the best Gilmore Girls guy, and why? Let me know down in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because right now, I don't have an upload schedule. I hope you guys are having a great winter holiday, and I hope 2023 is a great year for us all. I'll see you then. Bye!